in an intuitive way, you have done this, but uh, I believe this is what interests us the most about you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. it's actually se 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 like conscious, half conscious, half non-conscious. So we're gonna ask you a series of questions just to understand how your childhood has impacted your design process. So we just want to first know where you were born and where you grew up. Okay, I was born in Beirut in 1971, and I grew up almost like all my life uh, during the war also, like the Israeli war and the civil war, uh, until I, which lasted until I joined university. There's a lot of Arabic nostalgia to them. While they're still very modern, I can still see that mm. you really have inspiration from the Arab world. Um, how would you describe the, the house you grew up in? Uh, I grew up in an apartment. It's the same apartment that uh, my parents, when they got married, they bought. And it's actually still their house. Like the, our parents' generation, they didn't move houses. Like they, they stick to their house. So it's still like, it's, a, it's, an, apart, it's an apartment building in Beirut, uh, which was also bombed at some point. Um, but this is like, for my family, this is like the hub where we all meet when we go back to Beirut. Do you have some patterns you recognize, some colors or some patterns that really are something that you still remember or? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, because it's still there, like the same, it's still mostly the same. It's, it's an old building from the 50s, so it has those uh, wooden shutters, red color, and the floor is terrazzo, so yeah, it's like that. So Fadi, do you think uh, your childhood impacted the way you currently design? 100% actually. I uh, myself like a retrospective uh, analysis of my work and try to find the roots of the way I design and where does it like get inspired from from my childhood. I did it myself and uh, like having grown during war uh, or uh, I think you didn't experience war gladly but for me like a city that was torn by war, a lot of things change during the um, like war times. Uh, nothing will function the way it functions. Like the things I see, like I'm not going to talk about the death or anything like that. I'm going to take it purely about design. So what we see, like what we used to see during the war is um, kind of, there's a dis disjunction between form and meaning. For example, a uh, football stadium is no longer for football. It becomes a refugee camp, for example. Um, for example, a wheel, uh, a car tire, is not a longer uh, tire to move the car. It's actually were used in the wartime to block the windows. We fill it with sand and we, we, we pile it and fill it with sand to block the windows because it provides a good protection from bombing. So that's why I'm saying like the form, which is the wheel, is no longer associated with the original meaning. There's a disconnect. And this was my own analysis. Like that's why sometimes you see the things I design are disconnected from their uh, classic form. Because of your uh, past That's why sometimes you find grass in my furniture you find concrete uh, used as a bench. So it's not typical like, uh, and this is like maybe because I don't have that connection. I don't have this classic connection, mm -hmm. okay. but I try not to take it like too, let's say um, dramatic. Yeah. I try to remove the drama from it. I just want it to be like pure uh, form and meaning. Like I try to abstract it. Uh, personally, don't shy away from this link. Like I don't, um, I feel that there's like what people, when people design and their uh, personality, even their ego, 
should we shouldn't shy away from it like design by itself is a very egoistic uh, yeah. act yeah like to to impose a form on the end user is already like kind of not arrogant but like it's a, it needs a certain kind of imposing act and uh, this is not something i shy away from and um, like i welcome any influence from like the psychology of the thought if it transpires into the design it's uh, like i don't let it shy away i i welcome it yeah and this, this is what a neuroscience and psychology mm. to to be able to feel this empathy with the inhabitants of the space where you are designing for them your creations and it it allows you to listen maybe to them more and to feel this empathy at the moment that you feel the empathy uh, you have this coherence from the beginning to the end in the design that most of the architects and designers and i don't say it uh, juhani palasma say it most of the architects and designers we are lacking the most important element in design which is this empathy mm. you don't have the empathy mm. you will be like you are saying we are um, selfish <laughs> and we are using our ego and that's it and we yeah. lack in this empathy which makes the design human mm -hmm. yeah actually I, what i mentioned before is like from my side but from the clients my clients what i do especially when i do their house because this is very very personal uh, what we do is we send them a questionnaire and oh. it's very personal what we ask like what is their daily habits like well, how do they have their meal do they have it while watching tv or do they have it on the dining table we don't want to create a house that is um, like doesn't respond to their life like yes that will be there's a there'll be a disconnect so we do this very personal questionnaire. Some people like we ask very personal questions, um, but at the end, uh, like what we design uh, works well with their um, with them. daily habits. And this is empathy. And uh, this was the reason that um, we had analyzed your works, like uh, with the loop, and we went into them and we found out that you also integrate biophilia and biomimicry. And biophilia mm -hmm. is when you incorporate uh, nature in the designs. Mm -hmm. uh, biomimicry is how you replicate the engineering of nature on your designs. Like, uh, look at the container that you created for the mm -hmm. desert, and uh, it's called Armadillo, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. it's really like trigger all my emotions because the armadillo yeah. is a uh, South American um, animal that yes. when he feels he needs to protect himself, he turns into a ball, okay? So it's a very resilient animal. And your creation is a very resilient container that as well is aesthetic and minimalistic, but, uh, I believe, and I want to ask you, did you create this container to emulate the resilience of the armadillo in the high temperatures and wild temperatures of the desert? Yes, it was, uh, yeah, we were inspired by the armadillo because we, for two reasons, the way it uh, kind of, it's the word armadillo comes from arm because it arms itself. Yes. And at the same time, we were like intrigued by the way it transforms, like from this very small shape and then it opens up. And this is what the trailer does. Because during transportation, it doesn't need to be this big. It needs to be as small as possible for practical reasons and to be like kind of uh, weather proof. But when it opens up, it, uh, so it's not literally. So we didn't take the armadillo li literally. Yeah, wood uh, has a more, uh, fr it's a friendly material to touch. It's alive, like 
the wood doesn't die when it's like removed from the tree. It's still alive. It still transforms. It still changes. And uh, there is like certain energy that in the wood rather than the other mineral material. We like to use it a lot. Also, it's more moldable. Like it's easy to mold, easy to work with. But mainly it's the textile, uh, no, tactile, I mean, the tactile aspects of it that we like. Engaging the end user. Uh, the other thing is like, although that we do that questionnaire and everything, but this is like for the general design. But on the, when it comes to a piece of furniture, we do a lot of these transforming designs because we believe that a piece has to keep like kind of responding to its end user's needs. So it's not static. It kind of changes with the user. If he wants to add something, if he wants to transform it, if he, like we have this bar, that's not always a bar. If you don't want it to be a bar, it can be something else. I will really interesting. So the bar turns into what, for example? Like a bench, if you don't, if not, because nobody is using bar like 100%. No. use it once a week so if you don't want to use it as a bar you use it as a bench or mid-level you can use it as a desk uh, so it's like a mechanism i can send you the i think what you're trying to do with all those designs that are out of the normal frame you know they are not normal compared to other designers uh, you're trying to elicit these happy emotions i think like you want people to feel happy and to feel connected with those creations. Yes, exactly. Yeah? And as well, for example, you are minimalistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And minimalistic, like you use a lot of minimalism. And minimalism uh, helps a lot the mental health because uh, mental clutter and visual overstimulation tends to stress most of the people and what you do is you want to create designs that help us feel better to reduce our levels of stress we use a lot of wood a lot of green and functionality that will make us happy the mm -hmm. functionality is to uh, to get to to take out from us what we want so you adapt it to what are our basic needs mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. So, uh, do you think uh, spaces like for everyone and designs for all the designers should be always thinking about elicit positive feelings? Yes, for sure. I mean, yeah, unless you're designing a prison, I think you should like <laughs> always think of the well being of the user, even, even the prison, like, shouldn't be like a place of um, torture. It should be like a place where anyway, we we're not talking about prisons, but spaces in general where you work, where you live, they have to really like, number one, you have to cater for the well-being of the user. Good. No, I think people don't know also that psychology is everywhere. So the only thing they have to go to a therapist, but you know, psychology can start from your house and really incorporate elements of psychology inside your house really will help you also mentally be better and healthier. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you, you want to say something, Fadi? Like, uh, we had talked a lot, like, uh, I had talked a lot, and I want, like, maybe, if you want to say something, please tell me more about you. Tell me what you think about this pandemic, if you like, or something else. Like, I uh, like... Yeah, I mean... Um... I, I really want to like I'm sad about like what happened and the number of people that uh, are infected and the number of deaths but at the same time I'm kind of want, want people to use this moment as an opportunity yes. to pause and rethink because we are like rushing rushing through our lives and we don't have time to think and uh, like I think artists and designers, it is like their main role to do this because I think other kind of disciplines, yeah. they will not have the consciousness or the, 
let's say wisdom to rethink um, they just want to get back to what they had yeah. as it is so um, I think one uh, Indian writer her, her name is Arundhati Roy yes uh, she wrote a very nice article about it she's saying like this is this should be used as a portal towards a better world and without uh, like we should leave our heavy baggage behind us not carry it with us through this portal so you we need to use the pandemic as a portal and this is like this is um my uh, my inspiration behind all of this um not very optimistic that it will work but it will have a like, little seed towards change from a design point of view like there's a lot of things that are going to be re-questioned now in terms of office space why do we need this office space why do we need many things that we thought that are essential but proved to be not really essential correct and like mm. you say there is also um, an architect Johanny Palasma, like I always mention him because I admire him. He, he, he wrote an essay and at the end he said, with this pandemic, I think we need to learn, to relearn the art of dwelling, to relearn yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And with that, and what you had said, uh, I think it's clear that we have, we have to just put up our sleeves <laughs> and start working towards a better designs yes and a better world generally. better through design yes <laughs> yes you agree yeah. <laughs> thank you fadi uh, i'm so thank glad you. you accepted this interview